Hi. I've seen a number of people asking the same question a couple of different times, a couple of different ways uh, in the group over the last couple of days. And so I thought I'd go live and answer the question. Um, thanks for bearing with me as I do this. One of the reasons I'm doing these kind of go live so much is because this is really a lot of what I'm going to be doing when I actually start going live um, you know, to, to my audience. So thanks for letting me practice with you. So, for example... Uh, Eric this evening asked the question, does anyone know why when I talk to my Skype or Zoom guests, they can't hear the music or sound effects I'm playing in Ecamm? They can hear my mic, but not the sound effects or music. Well, the problem, the problem Eric, has nothing to do with the fact that you're wearing headphones. Uh, the problem is that, the problem is where sound exists on your computer. So Ecamm is taking sound from a couple of different net from a couple different sources, and then it sends it out over the video stream that it's recording to. Uh, you know, so, so right now, Ecamm is taking sound from my Yeti, and it's sending it off to Facebook Live. But if I were to join to start a Zoom call or a Skype call, it's not going to send the audio there. Ecamm lets you create a virtual camera that you can use with Zoom, so you get the video output from uh, from Ecamm, but Ecamm's kind of like the M50 uh, over HDMI, and it doesn't actually send the audio with it. So I'm going to show you how to use the application Loopback from Rogue Amoeba to create a virtual microphone to go with the virtual camera. So the first thing, the first thing that we're, that we're going to do is we're going to go over to Loopback, and Loopback lets you, uh, it, it's kind of like a, a virtual patch panel. You have different outputs, you have different inputs, and it lets you just create connections between the two. So we're going to create a new virtual device. And I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call this the Ecamm Virtual Mic. And that's the name for it. And we're done. Okay, um, the pass-through, uh, pass-through is a special device that will accept input from other applications. And then it takes it as a source for this, for, uh, for this to create a microphone out of it. So we're going to, so we're going to use a pass -through, a virtual pass-through device to connect audio output from Ecamm to a micro, uh, to become a microphone for Zoom. And the way we're going to do this, and... Adrian, I've got a question here for you, because even when I put Ecamm into live demo mode, I couldn't figure out how to get it to actually capture the menus when I use them. So, uh, Adrian, if you or anybody else knows what setting I don't have right, then I invite you to go live and show me what, what, I, did, what, uh, what I was missing. So I'm just going to do this off camera, unfortunately. Um, but I'm going to go back to Ecamm Live and go up to the option to the output menu, and there's an uh, there I can configure an audio monitor, and in the audio monitor I can see the new Ecamm virtual mic that I just created. Now, because reasons, uh, it shows up as loopback audio because Ecamm was running while I created it, and so it didn't notice the name change. As soon as I quit and relaunch Ecamm, it will see the correct name. But I don't want to do that right now since I'm live and that would kind of get in the way. So it says loopback audio, but I know what it means. Um, the other option that I have there, by the way, is Yeti stereo microphone. One of the things that I love about the Yeti is it actually has a headphone jack on it. And I can connect a pair of wired headphones to it and get real-time feedback straight off the microphone so that I can hear what I'm doing. It's brilliant. Uh, and there's zero latency because the sound is going straight from the Yeti into my ears. It's fantastic. So uh, I'm going to set the output monitor. And as soon as I do that, this is, there we go. And as soon as I do that, now you can see the levels go live in loopback, showing that it is receiving a signal. Okay. Now all that we have to do is if I go over to Skype, or not Skype, uh, Zoom, because I think, because um, that was the one I felt like demoing with. Um, right now, you can see it's getting level from from the Yeti, and oh, just like uh, just like Ecamm, because it was running when I did this, it sees the initial name when the device was created. So 
it says loopback audio and it's yeah this is live tv folks i was just doing this uh, a minute ago and why is it not sticking on loopback well you know i can quit and relaunch zoom because i'm not broadcasting with zoom so i come back here same as system okay you can virtual my all right there we go um, I guess that was just a fluke because I had just created the device. Live TV, you know this isn't pre-recorded, um, or I would have edited all that out. And here you go. This is the Ecamm virtual mic. It looks the same as the output from the Yeti because right now I'm not doing anything with Ecamm except talking to camera. So it's the same signal. But there you have it. Um, so we just created a virtual microphone in... Um, using loopback that we can use to route the audio from Ecamm into Zoom or Skype or um, any application that we want to. Uh, there are a couple of other tricks that um, that you can do with, with loopback pretty easily. Uh, for example, um, I'm gonna call this one music.app. And I don't want the pass through on this one. I could leave it, it wouldn't hurt anything, but I don't wanna clutter up that output, that list of output devices and I'm gonna select music. And now any application can select this music.app virtual microphone and pull in whatever, whatever music I'm listening to. Respect copyright. Um, you can do this for Safari, you can do it for any application um, that you wanna serve it up. A couple of the other interesting ones, um, you know, if you're demoing something where this is relevant, um, like if you want to capture the interaction with Siri and what Siri is saying, you can grab that. Um, if you're doing, if you're showing voiceover um, for something, you can also grab the, grab that audio, which is for most apps have a hard time grabbing this audio, um, but Loopback can grab it just fine. Now, uh, you may have noticed that I still have the trial mode of this um, because I am. Uh, there's a workflow that I'm working on creating and I haven't quite gotten it working, but I'm, I'm, I'm probably pretty close to buying Loopback. Uh, so far, all of the things I've needed it for uh, have been short things and I haven't needed to keep it around. Uh, I haven't needed to use it for that long of a period of time. Uh, the trial mode is fully functional, but if you go past 10 or 15 minutes, then it starts overlaying static on anything that is processing. But so far, everything I've needed it for has been pretty short stu uh, short term stuff. So. I've, I've, I've skated by. But a workflow that I'm working on is combining the output from, or combining loopback with another application from Rogue Amoeba. And there we go. Uh, this, yeah, this is Rogue Amoeba, or uh, this is Audio Hijack by Rogue Amoeba. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating an audio pipeline where I'm taking audio from the uh, microphone or from from the Yeti. Um, I've got a level monitor here just to watch it. And this is the special sauce that I'm working on. Um, I want to see if it'll work. And I'm going to actually start capturing the audio. So, oh, yes, it's warning me that <laughs> my output device doesn't actually exist. So let me do that. Let me go back to loopback and create limited Yeti. I deleted all of these just so I could show starting from scratch. And this again is just a pass through. And now go back here and I need to select the limited Yeti that actually exists. And okay, so what this pipeline is doing is it's capturing audio from the Yeti. It's showing me a level indicator. Um, it's going to do some, uh, some signal processing here, um, a little bit of EQ adjustment. Um, and then another output monitor because, and then this is, and then the output, I'm having it go to the limited Yeti virtual microphone, which I can grab using, uh, which I can use as input on the, um, as a microphone in, in Ecamm, instead of going straight to the Yeti, I can do this processing on it. Now, why would I want to do this? Well, sometimes I can get excited. And if I start talking too loud, I don't want to rail the microphone and cause distortion. 
So if I can, I'm not going to try to get, no, I'll show you what it does. Um, so this arrow here is showing where on the level it is. And what this curve means is as the sound gets louder, I don't want the output to get louder and louder. Hi, Alan. Um, I don't want the output to get louder and louder. I want the output to kind of level off. And I only want it to get so loud and stop there. So, um, yeah, that's the idea behind this. This is a more advanced audio workflow. Um, it's not anything. Uh, we're still using an audio capture. Yeah. Let's go back to camera. Um, so that is, um, yeah, so that's. Uh, loop back and how you can use it uh, for both some simple stuff just to get audio just to route audio from Ecamm into a Skype call or a Zoom call or how to bring in audio from another application into <coughs> excuse me into Ecamm. Uh, those are two questions I've seen a number of people ask um, in the group uh, over the last couple of uh, over the last couple of days. So uh, a couple of comments here from Anonymous. Uh, the Yeti sounds great, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. Um, the Yeti is right here. It's just off camera. Uh, I've got the microphone pointed at my mouth, mouth not pointed at the microphone. So I don't have a pop filter on it. In fact, let me just turn the camera real quick. And there's the Yeti. It's right there. Uh, it's about a foot from my mouth, give or take. Uh, this way I'm facing the camera. The, micro the microphone's pointed at me. It picks it up great. And I don't have to worry about a pop filter. At least that's the idea. So um, nice use of Audio Hijack. Thank you. It's an amazing tool. I've been using it for years. Um, I think the first thing I used it for was um, recording, um, just uh, recording uh, radio off of the internet. Um, um, I remember I had a an automated recording would go off every week to record uh, Prairie Home Companion with Garrison Keeler. Missed that man. <laughs> Cyprian says, yeah, I can't see any, any comments other than mine. Still, fortunately they do show up. If you go, um, if you go to the video afterwards, you can see them all there. Um, I think Facebook's just having a bad day because I've, I've been seeing that in all of the live videos that I've been on. So hopefully they'll get that sorted out soon because it it, it, is, it does leave something to be desired from the, uh, the experience a little bit. Um, what are the processor requirements for this setup? Audio Hijack and Loopback are actually extremely efficient. Uh, they don't use much, uh, they don't use much processor at all uh, or memory. Um, if, if your computer can handle Ecamm, you can probably handle Loopback and Audio Hijack on top of it. And I, I have, intentionally tried to do some very intense and abusive things just to see how, you know, just to see what I can throw at it and see if I can make it buckle. And I haven't been able to. Uh, they are very well-behaved apps. Um, I'm impressed with them. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are solid quality, uh, quality software. So uh, anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've been trying to figure out how to get Ecamm to, to cooperate with your, your uh, Skype calls and Zoom calls, FaceTime would work, you know, FaceTime too. Uh, it's, it's not picky. I'm saying um a lot tonight for some reason. Uh, anyway, if you've been having issues with trying to get audio from, one, from point A to point B on your computer and you've been having difficulty with it, check out Loopback. Uh, it does. It's a $99 application. It's a one-time purchase. It's not a subscription. Uh, you'll own that version of Loopback forever. Uh, they do do paid upgrades, like when they come out with a new major version. I think they're on Loopback 2 right now. Uh, when they went from Loopback 1 to Loopback 2, I want to say it was like a $20 upgrade. Uh, or 40, no, $49 upgrade. It was, it was half off. Uh, so when they come out with version 3, you, you would pay for the upgrade, but it's not It's not uh, software as a service. You, you buy the license, you own the license. But, and they do also have, like I said, they have a, uh, a trial program, uh, a, a demo mode, trial mode, which is fully functional, but after so many minutes, it starts overlaying static so that you just don't want to use it anymore. So hope this helps and enjoy learning how Ecamm works. I know I'm loving it.